John. Well, uh, just want to thank all you guys and, and gals for joining us this morning in these uh, trying times. I think it's a, a pretty awesome idea that Susan and uh, Mike and John came up with to do this. And so uh, I want to thank you guys for uh, first and foremost for hosting this and uh, having us all. And, um, I'm not disappointed that we don't have to go to Vegas for one. So um, there's that. Um, I'll go ahead and jump right on in. Uh, I am the director of uh, sales for Innovox Audio. Let me share my screen. Uh, I'm also joined uh, by Kelly Perkins, who is our director of marketing, and I believe uh, Chris Oswood is online. I'm not sure. I didn't see his name pop up, but uh, uh, if you're here, good morning, hey, Chris. There. Okay, cool. So anyway, um, what we are uh, is a loudspeaker manufacturer. We are proudly built in St. Paul, Minnesota um, in the USA. All of our products are uh, made there. Um, we have uh, a few of our products that are uh, stocked, um, some of the architectural products, I'll get into that in a few minutes, um, but the bulk of our products are uh, built to order. So um, we were established in 1994. Uh, again, Chris Oswood, he is the founder and CEO of the company. Chris, uh, I don't know if there's any end users with us today, but um, for all you integrators, uh, Chris was also an integrator, um, and his reasoning for coming up with the company in the first place was that at the time, he really wasn't pleased with how traditional loudspeakers were performing primarily in um, reproduction of the voice. So the spoken word uh, is a very important part of what we do. Um, I'll show you some of the some of the things that we do um, to enhance that as well. Um, going through uh, fairly quickly some of the uh, applications that we have with our products, um, collaboration and huddle spaces, which we all know um, are going to be even more important um, now that we've got all this fun stuff going on. Conference rooms, training rooms, uh, we do legislative and judicial applications, event spaces, sporting venues, and houses of worship, uh, and performing arts theaters. So uh, our basically uh, goal uh, with all our products is to make sure that people can hear uh, clearly, that they're able to discern uh, the spoken word, and that uh, everybody can be on the same page whenever you're uh, in conferencing um, situations. So this is a little bit of a bold statement here, um, but this is uh, what we're founded on. We're the loudspeaker, only loudspeaker built to optimize speech intelligibility. Um, have, uh, there's a white paper uh, that Bob Oswood, Chris's brother, wrote uh, that's available on our website if you guys are interested in seeing that. It's, uh, it's a little bit of a long read, but it's really inf informative. And here's just a little video. I hope this is going to come through. Um, of uh, what I'm talking about. I'm doing it now? Yeah. Oh. Are y'all hearing that? Sorry, that doesn't close. Very low uh, from my side, lad. Yeah, I agree, uh, lad. Yeah, if you it's a little quiet. Now, okay. okay. I'll skip that. All right, so I didn't know how that was gonna work. Um, but anyway, so uh, two of the things that we use in our loudspeakers, um, almost every single loudspeaker that we manufacture uses high frequency ribbons uh, drivers. Let me turn my volume down now. And then this forward motor driver. So you can see, um, if you guys can see my pointer, uh, instead of a traditional loudspeaker, um, we've got the motor on the front. So it's pinned here. This is a steel frame um, that acts um, as a heat distribution. There's also ferrofluid in the gap for that. But you notice there's no spider. Fine. So um, with this driver, the, trans uh, the transient response is extremely quick. You can also see uh, how shallow it is compared to a traditional loudspeaker. So this is a three and a half. And this is also a three and a half inch driver just for your reference. 
And this is the, uh, the main component uh, in all our speakers. So the reason I say that it's the only loudspeaker uh, designed for speech intelligibility is because the combination of these two drivers here, their transient response are very similar. Um, and so they're able to get back to that zero point very quickly. And so all the spoken words uh, come through very crisply and very clearly. So some of the best practices that we uh, like to talk about is co-location of the audio and video. So whenever you're in a conference situation, uh, all your attention is pointed toward the screens because you're watching, but then the audio is also coming from that. So co-locating the uh, loudspeaker with the video display uh, is very effective. And what this does is it helps reduce the cognitive load. So cognitive load is, is um, whenever your brain's trying to um, equal out the, the sight and sound uh, of what you're um, participating in. So traditional uh, conference room with ceiling speakers, you guys all know how that kind of works. You've got uh, a little bit of overlap there with some of the, the ceiling speakers. But with our, uh, products, you're able to get the audio coming from one source, from where the face is uh, that's on the screen, and you get nice, smooth coverage across the listening area. One of the other uh, things that we like to talk about is establishing an oral anchor. So as you can see in this picture, you've got the loudspeakers here above um, where the preacher would be preaching from. So it pulls all your attention uh, to the minister. And then in this picture, same church, you've got an oral anchor here uh, where the music would be coming from. And then whenever the music is playing, then everybody's attention is drawn to that because you're not hearing it uh, at different times and, and different places in the room. So here's one of our, uh, just a sample solution uh, of what we can do. The Innovox large room toolbox. So we've got the HLA, which I'll describe to you guys in just a little bit. The HLA XT extension, uh, an under balcony, and then a stage lift. So we uh, have all these products put together in this auditorium. So you've got your main uh, speaker up here in the front. You've got your low frequency response. Um, if you noticed uh, in that HLA, we've got the low frequency uh, in a dipole configuration so you've got control over that low frequency in the room then you've got your uh, main uh, mid high coming from here your stage lips and then everything time aligned with your HLA 1650 XT and then of course your under balcony speakers so it gives you just really nice smooth coverage uh, in the entire space uh, our products are architecturally pleasing, so you can see the nice shapes uh, that we have with the curves. All these curves are purposeful um, in determining the vertical opening angle of the loudspeakers. So this is a, a case study before and then after. So I don't know who put that uh, flying junkyard up there, but um, once they got this system in, you've got your uh, subwoofers here uh, in a cardioid array. So you've got two facing forward and one facing rear. You've got your uh, monitors for your choir up here and then you've got your left center right. So with our high output arrays, here's a better uh, picture. You can see the dipole low frequency in this box. And here we have an assortment of the different boxes. Again, the curvature uh, determines the uh, vertical opening angle. Oops. Um, so we have a 20, a 35, and a 50 degree uh, vertical opening angle. We do have um, uh, ease data coming shortly. Um, Charlie Hughes over there in uh, North Carolina has been measuring all our boxes, and so we should have that stuff ready for you guys here um, just any time as far as I know. I know he, he's gotten the measurements all done, uh, so we're just waiting on on all that to be certified by um, AFMG. So here's an example uh, of another example of the room with the HLAs. This one in the center here, um, you've got an HLA uh, on one side and then you've got a dipole low frequency box on the other so that you're not having to have 
stage stacked uh, subwoofers. So it's a nice way to keep the stage clean. It's a very nice uh, smooth look um, and very pleasing. Here's another shot of it. And then here's another room. Kelly and I uh, went up to Alabama, I guess it was, wow, last summer. Um, this is a junior high, if you can imagine that. The, uh, the front of the building looked like a building that would, you would find on Old Miss campus. It was just absolutely amazing. But this is in, uh, where were we? Um, doggone it. Huntsville? Well, it was outside of Huntsville, but right. where they do all the recording. Um, anyway, I can't think of it. Um, but where the Rolling Stones and all those kind of folks have, have uh, recorded over the years. Muscle Shoals. Muscle yeah. Shoals. Thank Muscle you very Shoals. Much. That's where it was. Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> I was drawing a blank, man. It's too early over here in Mississippi. Um, and then we have another line, the architectural uh, series of loudspeakers. So these are all designed for uh, discrete integration into the architecture. We have a, uh, several different lines in the architectural series. Um, and uh, just a, a quick note, we do have a um, application guide for the Flex product, uh, which is all the video product, the, app, uh, the architectural products, and then also the high output arrays. So those are available on our website. Um, but you can see how these just kind of um, disappear into the architecture. So this is a, an, an SL 4.1 tilt. So you've got your ribbon down here on the bottom side that's on a 10 degree down angle, and then you've got four four inch drivers here um, for uh, that comp uh, comprise that loudspeaker. So we're able to, uh, again, disappear uh, into a lot of different uh, architectural applications. This is a, uh, an architectural or an AE uh, micro lift. So there's a small ribbon driver uh, on this 30 degree down angle. And then you've got a two inch driver here um, and a pretty, pretty powerful little box. John and Mike can attest. Um, they've seen me do this presentation live and um, play those uh, in a demo situation for folks and, and they're pretty impressive. This is an MLA 48, so you can see how uh, nicely it just tucks right into that little nook. Um, there's 48 one inch drivers. We have uh, four different models, an eight inch, um, excuse me, an eight driver, 16, 32, and 48 driver uh, configurations. And then we can come up with some unique solutions. This is a, uh, uh, an array that was that we put together. This is in a uh, 360 degree room. Um, I believe it's, um, but we can come up with, and then of course the flex array. This is the, probably the line share of, of what we do. Um, all our flex video products are, uh, uh, dimension match. So we take the manufacturer um, and model of the display and then we cut them to size so that they uh, integrate seamlessly. So you can see here uh, at, at Infocom, um, whenever I first started with the company a little over two years ago, uh, we were standing in the booth and people would walk up and say, well, what is it that you guys do? Because they wouldn't even notice that the loudspeakers were there flanking the speaker, uh, the, the display. Um, so they just disappear really nicely. Another example of that there. And here's another example in a mall. So why work with Innovox? Well, we're consistent. So we have consistent sound, consistent quality, and our customers are consistently satisfied. Again, all of our products are made in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, so uh, you know that uh, they're being built here in the United States. We're here to support with speaker recommendations and design assistance. Troy Landon is our uh, VP of engineering. Chris also uh, does some of this, um, well, he does <laughs> a whole lot of the uh, system design um, whenever it comes to that. And again, we've got selection guides for all three of the families. Um, it has all of the products, so you're able to see um, what products they are, what applications they can fit into, um, all their specs and things like that. All of that is available um, at innovoxaudio.com slash resources. And again, proudly built in St. Paul.
So some of our key industry partnerships, uh, we do have Dante available on um, a lot of our products that are self-powered. Uh, we work with PowerSoft amplifiers exclusively. We have Earthworks um, that we work with and then also Ice Power. And then a few of the larger corporations that we can be found inside their facilities. So let me jump out of this real quick. I wanna show you guys uh, a couple of new products that we have that we were gonna introduce at Infocom. So the Flex MicroFocus 2.1, um, so you can see here, uh, you've got your dimension match loudspeakers. These are uh, two inch drivers here with the ribbon in the middle. And then this is a wall mounted uh, low frequency cabinet. Um, this is all self powered. You've got Dante available if you want that. Um, but it's just a nice uh, package. This just tucks right behind the display to the wall and uh, nobody ever sees uh, what's going on with all of that. The other one that we have, this is the focus, and then we have the micro precision here. Um, that's just the horizontal version. So um, I wish I could play these for you. Um, hopefully whenever we can all be back in the same room together and I can get out there and travel with Mike and John and Susan and the other guys, um, then I can bring some of these things to show and tell for you guys. Kelly, you want to tell them what's going on with uh, marketing? Uh, sure. So uh, basically, I started with Innovox kind of part time about I don't know, maybe a year and a half, two years ago. Um, and we've been kind of pushing it really hard on, on social media and getting case studies done, updating the website, um, and just trying to get photos and stuff out there. Um, so between now and probably, well, because like Lad said, we're not really doing Infocom anymore. Um, <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be doing a lot of digital stuff. So if anybody has um, any recommendations, any testimonials, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, we're always looking for, um, you know, similar to other manufacturers, we're all looking for um, photos and videos and, and testimonials. But um, and if you have any questions or anything, um, suggestions, just feel free to reach out. So I wanted to show you guys um, real quick, if I can find these um, brochures that Kelly has put together. Um, and am I going to find it? I bet I'm not. So let me show you the selection guide real quick. Am I still sharing? Can't tell. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, here's the architectural integration uh, selection guide. So here's all the different lines that we have in the architectural series. Quite a few of them. Um, but every every product that we have serves a purpose. Uh, and again, that purpose is for very articulate um, speech reproduction. So in this guide, you'll be able to find uh, each of these. You can see the different shapes of these for the different uh, vertical outputs. And then it just goes in and it gives you um, some, some basic data um, for all of those. And we've got those available again for all three of our product lines. So you guys have any questions? Um, <laughs> it is kind of short, and the reason it's short is because usually I'm doing a demo. Um, yeah, Brent. Uh, yeah, lad, we got one from uh, Brent Wooten. Okay. Uh, depth of the uh, wall mounted sub, and I know that's probably a multi-answered uh, answer, so I'll let you take that. So the the six inch and the dual six inch uh, are three and a half inches deep, so they fit in into a, a regular studded wall. Um, they do come out just a hair uh, from the front with the, uh, the mounting bracket, um, but they, they fit nicely in there. Uh, I know Rich has used quite a number of, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. My uncle took that picture, by the way, down in Texas. Um, so uh, we've got all the specs and everything uh, on the website, so we're able to um, help you out with all of that. 
Okay, V is asking a question, where can we find on the website the Flex Micro? Flex Micro is not up on the website yet because it's a brand new product. Um, we're not quite shipping, but um, I think Susan is going to be sharing uh, the emails um, from all you guys that are attending, and uh, I'll be able to send you the data sheets on those, um, which yeah. I'll show you. Great. And just as a uh, point of housekeeping, this is, the session is being recorded, and uh, we will uh, be posting everything up at some point once the week is over and uh, can get everything uh, correlated. So we'll let everybody know when each of these sessions will be available online. Um, Patrick Calandra wanted to know when the new MicroFlex product will be available. Let. We were hoping uh, and still hoping that uh, we'll be shipping by the end of the summer for that. Okay. Uh, hey, Rich Trombetis, maybe you can give us a little insight on that, that subwoofer because I think you had a little bit of input on that and where it came from and how successful it's been. So which version? Because they've been involved in a couple of different <laughs> incarnations of their subs. And uh, I mean, basically, Chris has constructed for my dealers anything from a fully weatherproof uh, cardioid 312-inch subwoofer for an extremely high-end swimming pool sound system that I helped design for one of my uh, dealer's clients right through uh, powered versions of the Micro Sub 12, uh, custom grills for uh, Micro Sub 2x6s and 1x6s that allowed them to be back-mounted inside of banquettes with cutouts for the uh, just the speaker hole opening and then grills that were much smaller profile on the front edge. Basically, uh, the bottom line with Innovox is that anything that you can conceive of that's reasonable, that fits within you know, the palette of what they can construct, they will build for you. Uh, you know, they're, they're extremely uh, customer oriented, they're extremely solution oriented, and uh, Chris is just, you know, right from being able to create the documentation to delivering, uh, you know, custom products on a very short and reasonable time frame. Really, Innovox is like no other manufacturer that I've dealt with in terms of that capability. Yeah, they remind me a lot of Clock Audio in terms of taking something from nothing and uh, being able to develop it in a relatively quick quick time frame. Absolutely. I, I can give you another example of that. We're um, on a uh, spec right now for uh, the soccer stadium up in Nashville. And so what Chris did um, is took an HLA, exploded that HLA um, so that it would be the same height as the, the large video wall. I think the video wall is 22 feet tall. So exploded that array um, so that it would um, look as though it's all just one cabinet about, um, I don't know, 14 inches wide, Chris, something like that. Um, uh, all the hardware you know, is with it um, and all of that kind of stuff. So that's one that uh, WJHW is doing up there. Um, uh, uh, Thank you. Hi, this is Susan. Um, can I um, just ask you to back up a little bit? I think we breezed past the Synergy Compact rather quickly. And I think a lot of people have interest in upgrading their huddle room sound system. Yep, can do so that. I have a, a picture me... of uh, one of these that I'd like to share. And if you can talk about what's in this device and what your options are and so forth, okay. that would be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the Flex Energy Compact is, <clears throat> so you've got a ribbon driver and then four of those three and a halfs on either side here. Again, it's a dimension match product for a huddle space. It does have an integrated microphone that works really well. We've done several uh, demos, um, long distance, uh, demonstrating the function of that. There is an integrated camera pocket, not, uh, it does not come with the camera, so it allows you to choose, uh, I think this one's showing um, a huddle camera there, um, but you're able to choose whatever web type camera that you would like um, that would fit inside that. So we've got the specs on what that size uh, pocket is. 
Um, it is self-powered. It does have an output uh, to drive uh, a line out to drive a, a subwoofer, um, which we do have that pairs up with this. Dante is available um, with this, and then you've got your toss link, you've got analog input, and also, uh, of course, Dante uh, option input there. So very nice little uh, compact system for uh, your huddle spaces. Um, yeah, I did kind of breeze by that. I'm sorry, Susan. That's okay. I know that's um, a hot topic these days because there's so many huddle rooms and in many cases, you know, a small speakerphone might be okay, but there are certain places where you just need much better audio. And I think that's what was um, driving this. So. Yep, absolutely. And, and then Lad, those are again cut to size by uh, determining uh, what's, what the screen it's going to be sitting underneath. Correct. And is there a limitation on the length of that? Of the width of that? This one, we go up to about a 70 inch. Um, so from a 40, 49 inch, I think is the size to uh, 70 inch. Thank you. So basically, uh, Lad, uh, just to share with everybody, when someone is looking to do that with a brand of monitor or screen, all one needs to do uh, is to just when the order is being entered, is basically to describe the brand and model number of that screen. Is that correct, Lad? That is correct. Yep, okay. that's all we need. It's uh, helpful if it's on the PO, and then Bob Thompson doesn't have to chase you down and ask you what what display and and uh, model number. So yeah, thank you. I hate when Bob has to chase me down for that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> scary. Yeah. It's very efficient. You will not escape. You will not escape. You yeah. you won't. And later, we, got, we have a couple of more questions left. Okay, sure. Yep. Uh, Charlie, Don Charlie Donnell is asking, what is the camera for that one? Uh, and what cameras, I guess, will it, uh, will it accommodate in that pocket? So um, there's a number of cameras that will fit. Uh, again, it's just a, a web size camera. Um, so uh, the dimensions, I believe, is three and a half by four and a half. Um, I had to double check that. Um, mm -hmm but we don't really have a list available of, because the cameras change so often and so quickly, we just have to go by uh, what the dimensions of the camera are. Okay, we have another question from V asking, this product has a mic out, does it mean there's a built-in mic? It does have a built-in microphone, yes. Okay. And uh, that's... Uh, so, uh, Lad Hyde, Alan Carr, do you have uh, any visual representations of the uh, custom video wall? Flex speakers, do you have any pictures of that? Uh, let me check. I think we do on the website. And while he's looking, we have done some custom, uh, custom speakers for very large video walls in lobbies in some of the bigger financial firms uh, here in New York. So again, they, they really can take on any project from, from small to large. So, just FYI. And as we were talking about uh, the microphone inside of this device, you can get it with a microphone or without, and with Dante and without. The, the um, one thing I caution is a lot of end users will try to use this in a room that is inappropriate, much like, you know, you walk into a conference room that seats 25 and you see a webcam on top of the TV. Uh, the microphone is good for huddle rooms, six to eight people. That's pretty much where it ends. It's it's 10 to 12 feet or so of pickup. And if you try to use it in a much larger room, the people in the back of the room aren't going to be heard that well. So I I caution you in using this in a large room, but I can tell you it's exceptional in, in a room of the size that it was in, intended to be used. I do have um, a demo of this, this device if anybody wants to... Um, give it a try in their location. Right now it's under lockdown <laughs> my dealers in Boston, but as soon as I can get back in there, I will have it again. And I know Innovox has more than one out there. So it, if there's somebody that wants to try this, I think you'd be very, very pleased with the results. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me share my screen real quick. Um, it's, I know we've got better pictures, but I, Oh, I can't, I can't share what you're sharing. You have to let yours go so uh, Lad can oh, share. sorry, yeah. We have a question, too, about what microphone is embedded in that device. Um, 
Chris can answer that. Um, it's really, it's just an integrated, I don't think it's really a brand. Um, it's just a little microphone that's, that's uh, there on the, the amp module that's connected. Okay. It's actually a um, high quality um, Omni condenser mic uh, made by Primo. There you go. Thanks, Chris. All right, so let me share this real quick. So you can kind of see, uh, we do have better pictures, but I don't have them at my fingertips right now, but this is um, the Flex Array. Um, so this is a larger format um, product that again is dimension matched to um, the video wall. So we have several different configurations here. As you can see, there's dipole low frequency. So we've got control over that. If the video wall is up high, then we've got the ribbon driver down here at the bottom uh, on a 10 degree down angle so that you've got nice smooth coverage. Um, and then depending on where your, your video wall is in relation to the floor um, would give you, uh, would, uh, would tell you where, where that acoustical center needs to be. And then we also have a smaller one, flex array compact. Same kind of thing, you've got your dipolo frequency, you've got your acoustical center here in the center with the, the ribbon. Um, and again, this is dimension matched. I'll show you guys one more thing. Um, Kelly just. I was gonna say too, lad, I have some photos of the IAC building in New York there. They're not the greatest photos because I had to sneak in past security to them. <laughs> but I can share my screen and show those too if you want. Breaking the law. All right, yeah, in just a second, I'm gonna uh, show them the Flex Synergy. So this is for larger um, corporate boardrooms and applications also um, training rooms can work. Um, but we've got it both the horizontal there uh, and the vertical. And what this consists of is a frame that uh, different modules can go into. And what we're doing to make things a little bit easier for everybody in our next price list that's gonna be coming out before too long, we'll actually have these packaged, prepackaged, so that you, you have your one for speech and then you have your one for um, extended uh, frequency um, performance. So you can select with, from these modules depending on what you need uh, in that flex synergy. And then um, we put them all together. We have the power amplifier um, there, either a two channel or four channel with the SP. Sliding camera pocket, we can accommodate all the, even the larger ones, the, um, we have a uh, uh, solution for um, the Cisco quad cam um, that we can do for you guys that we just came out with not too long ago. So lots of options for uh, conferencing applications with the Flex Synergy. You wanna, I'll stop sharing if you wanna show those pictures, Kelly. Yep, I'll pull them up here. You guys see them? So Kelly, did they replace the, the Bose MA-12s with an Innovox product? They did, in fact. I actually, this is Rich Trumbe just uh, talking. I originally uh, sold and was involved in the Bose system that Me went too. in, in the first time uh, down at, at IAC. And then I worked with Chris actually on this project as well. John Cardone brought me in to, to work, uh, work with this. And, uh, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. Uh, Chris built a, uh, you know, these displays exactly, these monitors exactly to the dimensions of the columns with a small space on the bottom that I spec so that when they clean the floor, they wouldn't destroy the cabinets. So the building owner walks in and says, why is there a two inch gap at the bottom? This should go to the floor. So <laughs> I, I, uh, <laughs> Rich, point, I ran the video wall for five years. So I'm sure you're either talking about Jason or, or Barry and uh, no, it was Barry. You know, yeah. who else, who else but the owner of the building? You know, when a, guy's, when a guy's a billionaire, you can't argue with him. Mr. Smithers, that's the other one. Oh um, there's God. two of them. So, uh, so you guys swapped out the MA-12s with an Innovox product. How, how greatly has the low end improved? Because that room is known for having nothing under 200 hertz when it was the MA-12s and the, and the well, there was no subwoofer. there was garbage. Yeah, see, they wouldn't let us put subwoofers in with the Bose system. So, so again, the challenge is in integrating. Uh, so we spec some really great Innovox subs and they were going to go under the screen and the cutouts were specified under the screen. 
And then we get down to the construction and uh, Barry once again says, oh no, we don't want any cloth details underneath the screens. So ultimately what had to happen is the subwoofers are running probably 20 dB hotter than they would have. And the, it's equalized so that the information that comes around the edges <laughs> of the construction <laughs> is how it's summed into the room just to, uh, I'm sure every integrator out there has been through this architecture versus reality debate. But the bottom line is, is that even in spite of that restriction, it sounds very good in there now. Great, yeah. Um, the MA-12s were a problem for years, no offense. Um, but no, they, there were no sure guys' fault. <laughs> Great, they go, cool. They go to 200, you know, they go to 200 hertz and they wouldn't let us put any subs in, so, you know. Yeah, it was my band of my existence for five years. Uh, cool, I'm thank sure. you, Look, looks amazing. They sound amazing. I, I bet I'll get, I'll, I can email Barry and tell him uh, they need to go lower. Well, no, see what happened is they built uh, actually- what, trouble, Scott. Oh yeah, no, that would, be, that would be perfect. No, Barry had us build custom pieces that matched the columns to the point of Chris being able to do anything. Chris actually built individual little pieces that fit onto the bottom and trimmed out the columns right to the floor level. This is a picture, I think, taken before that happened. Looks great. Yeah, it's a great installation. It looks wonderful. It sounds great. You know, with any with any speaker product, you know, it always really comes down to two things: sub subjectivity, and uh, actually sitting and listening to it. And uh, this product, every time we brought it in front of somebody that they physically have had an opportunity to hear it it always has raised a lot of eyebrows. And again, uh, early on, Led had mentioned the fact that they're optimizing speech intelligibility. And that is really key when it comes to this in the world that we work in. If it's for things like movies and resi type stuff, you know, it's good. And other products that are in that realm are really more designed for, you know, theater type. This is really designed for, for speech with a tremendously good uh, audio and musical uh, component of it as well. So it's probably one of the better rounded speakers I've ever heard. I was going to say to you guys, um, we have on our website, we have a project gallery of different types of, um, well, projects and applications um, that we've done. So if you're curious, um, you can also just go to innovox.com and um, see all these photos there, the ones that were in Lad's presentation as well as um, a whole bunch of others. So just a heads up. Any other okay. questions that you guys might have? Yeah, are there any questions out there? I just answered one. And yes, if, if, if you do uh, want to try one out for an application, like I said, you know, like we said, let us know, and uh, we do have a fairly good inventory of them. Uh, Mr. Ziegler wants to hear them, okay, so we'll, we'll make that happen. Um, but you will be very, very impressed. Again, they're so smooth, uh, they just sound fantastic. Yeah, I just wanted to add, John, that you know most of the people in our company come from music recording and live sound background, and I have to say there's some pretty seriously talented ears within our company, and um, the first time I really had a chance to hear Innovox speakers was when uh, many years ago when Chris traveled with me for the first time up in the Boston area. And we were doing a, he was doing a demonstration in an intermediate sized conference room in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I'll never forget this. And uh, typical conference room with roughly 14 people sitting in the room. I was sitting at the head of the table on the far side from where Chris was standing at the front. And he played the, the flex for the first time. And he uh, did a combination of, uh, of a pre-recorded speech and music presentation. And I almost fell off my chair. I was so impressed. And I was saying to myself, I said, wow, I, I could mix an album on, uh, on these speakers. They're so freaking clear and accurate. Uh, I was really, it was not what I was expecting. And, and it's really kind of funny that I say that because we at CSA have always prided ourselves on representing products that we ourselves truly believe in and uh, are very, very picky in what we represent and companies come to us on, almost on a monthly basis 
asking us to represent them. So when we choose a product, you, you can you can really take to the bank that all of us in the company are all in on the company, the product, the support. And I think Innovox really capsulizes all of those things in what we look for in representing a company. And uh, Chris and uh, Lad, you guys do a, a really a fabulous job. You really it's, do. It's all Chris, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if any of you out there are in the Boston area and you happen to be in the, the uh, neighborhood in the Back Bay where the um, Church of the Holy Cross is, they just went through a multi-million dollar renovation and there's a brand new Innovox system in there that is just amazing. They had old carpeting in there and different treatments and they ripped everything out to make the cathedral back to its original state, which of course is all marble. Um, it's the ceiling's 88 feet high. The cathedral's 150 feet long. And challenging uh, an acoustical environment is an understatement. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the the audio in there is really, really something to behold. And the church, the church is absolutely thrilled. The music director said he has That's not it. one yeah. complaint from from a a uh, very fussy constituency in that Paris and not one person has complained about not being able to hear the service it's and the music beautiful. director loves what? it too so it, it's really it's one of the most beautiful buildings I've ever seen and, and if you get a chance to experience the sound in there it's really something we do have a testimonial video online uh, isn't it on our website there Kelly yep yep, yep. Um, several testimonial video uh, videos but one in particular from the Holy Cross from the music director there very interesting it almost looks you know, in a way, a little bit like uh, St. Patrick's with the big columns coming down. And, uh, you know, St. Patrick's was redone recently also, but uh, I, I'd been in there since they redid it and it was okay. But uh, this must be really, really nice to hear. On the IAC uh, project, what amps are you using and how much power? Chris? <laughs> I believe what we ended up using was crowns, wasn't it? Oh no, no, we had actually. Uh, Chris, did we did did you provide the amp modules? You had the prepackaged rack mounted power swaps, right? I don't recall exactly. Generally, the Flex Array product has got onboard power that is power soft, and it is. Um, uh, it uses uh, four by 350 watt channels that are um, within the column. And I, I, I truly can't remember if we I, had I remember access clearly to the power the there. there. The power is remote, it's in a rack, but it oh, is, it yeah. is, it so is it, power softs with the <clears throat> presets in them. Yeah, it's, it's the identical um, components in a, a rack package that we do uh, using power soft modules. So uh, it's, it's uh, per column, it's four by 350. And and you ran regular speaker wire. Yes. Yes. As opposed to network cable. Correct. Right, because the power is remote from the column. It's not a long run from uh, back of house to wall. Uh, it's only about a. It's less than a hundred foot cable run when you go up into the yep. ceiling and everything. Yeah. They were all number fourteens. Is right. it open to the public? Oh, yeah. They yes, just don't want ish. you taking yes, photos. Ish. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yes, ish. Yes, it is yes, a ish. Just having worked there for five years, there's a public space. They get a tax rebate for that. So everyone is allowed to go in unless they're set up for an event, but do not take a photo. They will throw you out. Uh, <laughs> that, that's, that building also had an issue with uh, radon gas coming in through the basement. They didn't... Uh, put some plastic down. It was very interesting. Yeah, it was bad. Wow. Yeah, that lobby you were looking at, I heard that the water was up to seven feet in that lobby. Yes, but the east side of the lobby flood limit is below, is higher than the west side. It's tilted down, so the video wall never was the, the water was one foot under the video wall, but on the other side it would have been above the video wall. And there are two basements, so we had twenty foot of water below us and six feet of water uh, on the first floor. It was bad. I was there the first day after. It was bad. Wow. Yeah, we had a disaster recovery. It was bad. That's another webinar.
<laughs> <laughs> All right. Any any more questions out there, anyone? <laughs> <laughs>